Hi everyone, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thought I'd show you today a very quick and easy triple pocket to go in your junk journals. These are great, you can tuck them with lots and lots of different tags, etc. They make up three pockets. So this is our large one, which was done from a seven and a half inch circle. You've got a pocket here, you've got a pocket down here, and then you've got your front pocket. They go in our junk journals really easily. You can either decorate them in it, or like these ones, decorate them first, and then pop them in your journals. So my current journal that I'm working on at the moment, um, I'll just go to a page that's ready to go. Now this one, I do mine out of altered books. So I've already got it inked. I will cover this page as well. And then my little pockets will just go in like so and it'd be adhered into my book. Any of these will fit. As I said before, this one is the largest that I've done, which is a seven and a half inch circle. So it fits my page beautifully, depending on the size of your journals. Now this journal is from an old Reader's Digest. So it's not quite seven and a half inches by five inches. What I'd like to show you, just move that back to the side, is, as I said, this one was our largest one and it's just done straight with double-sided paper, ready to go. You'll see that they have a little gap down here where things will tuck into them. If you want, same little pocket, just a little bit smaller again this time, this one's a six inch pocket, but he's been decorated on the front to cover your little gap down here ready to put tags and tucks all into. We've then got this one, so he's already, already been done. He's got his tags all made for him. So I've got tag up the top, one little tag, two little tags, and then I've got a tag down the bottom. These all just slide straight in. This one will give you that edging again across here. So in here, down there, and then our large one at the back. This one again has been done the same way. Again, I've covered across the bottom with this one as well. So I've got tag up the top, tag in here, tag in here. You can tell I like tearing and a tag down the bottom. This is the sort of one that I'm going to show you today, which is just the smaller size. So it's done from a five inch circle. What you'll need for these are double-sided paper. Okay, now this is just a scrap piece of old 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper. That way you'll get your different, so you'll see this one has got what looks like two different papers completely on it, but what it is, is your double-sided paper. Now, I'm gonna leave the tags out of that one because I just want to show you. What I've used are circle cutters or circle templates. You can use a dinner plate. If you don't have a circle template, you can trace around anything you've got that's a circle. These ones go with a circle series that actually has a cutter in it but for today's tutorial I thought I'd show you how to do it with scissors. A lot of us get scared when using scissors and trying to cut circles. It doesn't have to be as hard as you think. All it is pop your template on, trace around him just going with a pencil. I'm using my inside circle because I just, as I said before, I just want a five inch circle. Going round, moving him aside. Now, when you go to cut out a circle, the bigger your scissors, the better results you're gonna get. What you're going to do is you're going to move your scissors. 
So my paper's hardly moving. It's my scissors that are following around my circle. So once again, my scissors go round. My paper's hardly moving. Now I'll move my paper once more for the entire width of the blade and go back round again. If you have short scissors, what happens is that you're moving it each time for just a little bit and then a little bit more. And that way you tend to end up with wonky cuts. So this way it's just scissors following the line and you'll just keep going round until you've got it. If you're really concerned with your scissor, scissor cutting, you can use pinking shears or decorative scissors or any of those. That way they will give you a wonky edge and it'll look like it's meant to be a wonky edge. So this little one that's been done has actually been done with the pinking shears. Lots and lots of different decorative scissors out there. As I said, this is just with pinking shears. Those of you that sew will usually have a pair of pinking shears somewhere in your cupboards. If not, you'll find nice little cheap decorative scissors that'll give you all sorts of patterns that mean that you're not so concerned about your actual circle. So this is the size of the circle that will make this size pocket. What you're going to do, I tend to work on a grid. I love my grids, it keeps me nice and straight. So it's at this point you work out like plain pink on the other side, roses on one side. This is where I work out whether I want my roses in the center or my roses here and here. For this one, I'd like my roses down the front so that I have more of a pattern down the front and in here. So what I'm going to do is turn my template upside down so that the paper I want on the bottom is the paper that's going against my grid. Sitting him on my grid, finding round about the centre point of my grid. So if I use my this thick line here in the centre, I want to go one, two, I've gone two and a half, one, two, two and a half that way. So that, that way I've got a centre line. Lifting it up, taking this side, the bottom side, over so that it lines up with that centre line. And that way I can watch how I'm going with this line down here. Pressing it just slowly so that I can see I'm in the right spot, creasing it down. Grab a bone folder and just give it a good crease. Doing the same then on the other side. So this was our centre point. If you find it's easier, pop your ruler down and draw a faint pencil mark. Don't forget to rub your pencil mark out though. So doing the same thing, lining it up. This is not still on my centre line and I knew my, my other line was just a little bit above that fold and folding him the same way to meet in with that. Making sure this bit's nice and straight. So you can see I'm manipulating that with my fingers. Again, giving him a crease. So now what you've got is just a straight little pocket, half circles each side. Folding him up so that you work out how much you want with this bit here, with your top, round about there. So I want to go to about there. Lining all your sides so that he's nice and even. Again, give him a crease and then fold him back out. If you've got pencil lines still showing around any of your circle, make sure you rub them out now. Saves going back down. And if you drew a centre line through here, make sure you rub that out now as well. So there's our little pocket. But as you can see, we don't have those sections. What we need to do is cut them. So if you unfold it, unfold one side, this little line 
just in here. Grab my smaller scissors. Is where I want to snip to. So I'm just going to go straight down to this crease in here, folding him over, doing the same on the other side. So now when I refold him, I've got this, got this, fold those ones out, lift him up and fold him over. That's it. If you want your roses to show, go the other way. Fold him over, fold him over, fold him over, and there's that one. So you can choose at this stage which way you want to go. As I said before, I like my roses down here. I also ink everything. Two reasons. One, I like how it then stands out on a page, see how it gives it that boost of colour around the edges and it defines all your edges. The other reason I like to ink is that if I'm a little bit wonky, because your ink goes in and out, it takes that wonkiness straight away from the eye. When I ink up, I tend to use my Distress inks. Um, so the colour I'm mainly inking with is brushed corduroy. I just use my blending tool. So I can see I need this edge. So I'll unfold him because it makes it easier. And it's just a matter of going round to this fold down here. So you can see all of a sudden, you can see where I've inked to where I haven't inked. So see how it then just pops on the page? So these guys are going to fold like that. So they want, I want this bit all inked so I'll turn him over now so it's the pink showing and I'll ink those and I'm just going in a small little semicircle over it. If you follow down what it'll do is cut through the foam so just little semicircles and straight down. So now we've got those ones this one, of course, needs the pink going down just slightly, giving them a little bit. And these ones, I want my roses. So again, and you can see he's quite wonky. But once he's done, once I've then started to ink, it takes that look away. Now, once he's all folded, so we've got this, this, this. So each of my edges fold uh, inked, but my sides aren't. So what I'm going to do now is ink my folds. Again, just straight down, going over, doing your other side. And do the bottom and do the bottom of these ones. Right, I also, so I've got all my edges done. I also then like to give it just a little bit of an extra dark edge and I then go into the walnut stain. Don't need much on this. And when I do the walnut stain, I literally just dab around the top. So I have two ink colours on mine. And what that does is just gives it a little bit darker on the edges, going into that softer brown down the sides. So wherever I've inked, I'm now going to just go back and just slightly dab my darker brown on my edges. So that what I've got now, so you can see, there's my softer brown, which is my brushed corduroy. Now, right on the edge, I have the deeper brown, which is my walnut stone. Now, make sure I've got each of those. Got that, got that, got that. 
yep, they're all now inked and done. So he's going to fold like that, like so, and like so. In a nutshell, that's your pocket. So to glue him together, we'll start over here. A piece of scrap so that I don't get glue everywhere. And I'll leave those ones tucked in so that they're not against this. Just use a normal... Mm, I use Express at Powertech. There are lots of different glues out there. Just double check you're coming out. Yep. Just a very fine line just across the bottom. Same on this side. Folding him over. Folding him over. Give him a push. I tend to use an old rag just to push right down so I don't end up with too much glue on my fingers because then I touch everything and I've got glue everywhere. So now I've made my first pocket, which is this one. What I want to do now is make my next pocket. So for that one, I'm going to glue down these two sides. So once again, just a little bit of a line down. Try and go straight, not like mine. The wonkier you go, the less of a pocket you're going to have. Just a little bit. Folding him up. Pushing him down. Again, I'll use my cloth just to push him and check that I've got no seat. And I've already realised that I've missed a um, inked edge. And on that one, I'll just go back with those. Right. So now I've got two pockets. My last pocket will be these little guys. Again, we're just going across here and across here. And straight over and over and give them a push your actual little pocket tag is done it's now just a matter of decorating it I just put my lid back on my glue because I have a tendency to never remember that right so what we want to do is decorate and work our way down so I've just got a tag here that I know fits these ones, which will fit in. Lots of different ways to do your tags and all the rest. I have a tendency to like to cover mine, be it either collage them with bits that I've got left over. This one was actually done out of the bits that was left over from that. This little pocket was done from a six inch paper pad double-sided paper paper pad um, slowly working my way through all my paper pads but it meant that I had little bits left over that then gave so you can see in here I've got this one this one was the bits that were left over from this otherwise I'll use a digi print and cover a tag which is what I'm going to do right now so there's my tag shape Sitting him on my scrap paper again. I use the Bostic Blue Sticks. They come out blue, which means my old eyesight can actually then see where I've done. Making sure you go all the way to your corners. Straight down, missed any spots. And then we're just going to, this is just a little square that I've got left over. And I'm thinking I'm going to go about there. So we'll just push him on. Again, I'll go back to my cloth. Saves my fingers. And he's all stuck on. So with my scissors, I can find them. Now you could use um, blade and a cutting mat here. You can use your scissors. You can use your guillotines, your paper trimmers. You can use sandpaper. Quite often if I've got time, I will use sandpaper to take mine off it gives a smoother edge but for quickness sake for the sake of 
this tutorial, we'll just use our scissors. I'll go down, cut around him. Now this was just a tag I made in advance um, so that it would fit this pocket. It's just a very basic tag shape. You can punch a hole, put ribbon in it. Um, this one was just another tag that I made just to give it a bit more curves, but it takes a little bit extra time. So for the sake of the tutorial, we'll go with a standard one. Once again, we'll ink him. And again, I used my brushed corduroy going down in my little semicircles. If you're doing this at home, do wait for the glue to dry. Don't just try and rip ahead like I'm doing. Always give your glue a chance to dry. Right, so I've got that one. And then again, I tend to go to my walnut ink and just go around the edges. Straight through. Just makes him pop a little bit more. All right. So tag number one is now in here. So for me, you could just put one more tag in there. I like two to tuck either side of this middle pocket. What I want to do for that one is, let's have a look. Let's go pink and green. My green's already got stuff on it, so I'm just going to tear a piece for my little one. I like my white showing, so I'm going to tear it this way so that I've got my white. He'll do. Once again. Because then it allows my ink to pick up my white. If you want to tear the whole thing, you'll end up with more sides with that torn look. Feel free. A bit lazy, I think. Right. Back onto my brown, my darker one with my walnut stain. Done. Tag two done. Tag three, I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to... No, I think I might use that. All right, so tag three, I actually want some more wording. So what I'm going to use is a stamp so that I can make my own paper and then I can tear around him. So with this one, I just want... A block, if you've got a stamp platform, by all means use your stamp platform. I've got my block on there, and I like. You see this paper again, it's out of a little paper pad. So they're plain on the other side, which means you've got journal space. I like this section in here, this linen look. So what I'm going to do, get my stamping mat out. I hope that's in shot, yep, is I'm going to ink this up. Now, because I've used this one in this light greys and blacks, I'm actually going to stamp in a grey. When I stamp my actual images, I like to use archival ink. They're a permanent ink, so they won't smudge, whereas my distress inks are a water-based ink. If my glue gets on them or whatever else, it'll make them run a little bit. So I want a crisp, sharp image, so I will use my archival ink. When I'm going to ink up my stamp, I'll go from side to side so that I don't get marks. Once again, never scrubbing over. Going through. As I said, I like this side. I'm not using the whole of my stamp on this, so it doesn't matter if I go past this bit. So straight up, middle finger, thumb, using one hand to push him down. This hand to then go back with this hand back on and lifting him up. So what I've got now, faded old ad, and I just want a section to go in here. So I want a tag out of this. Let's see how much more I need to trim him down.
All right, so I've got my tag. Checky fits in there, like so. Once again, I'll ink around him. Because he's torn all the way around, what he'll get is beautiful little soft bits that curl over because my blending tool is curling all those over. So you'll see this section. Right, back into my walnut stain, just on the edges. And again, it's pushing all those torn bits over. You can see I have love for torn. It also means that you don't have to be dead straight. If you're concerned about your cutting or your trimming, go for the torn look. It gives you more confidence because things don't have to be dead straight. So tag three is now done. So I've just got my center bit now. What I wanna do for him is along similar lines. So I use my pink, which is a lighter pink than this again, soft paper pad again. So this one, it's just a clear stamp. The last one I used was a rubber stamp. This time I'm just using a clear stamp and I'll stamp the whole image on here. Again, I'm going to stick to my archival ink, which is watering can, so that it all ties in with my colors. Stamping that down. Ink my stamp up. Always take your ink pad to your stamp. You can then see where you've stamped as well, where you've got your ink onto your stamp. Turning him over. Giving him a push. And down. Right, there's my image for this one. I'll sit you over there. What I want for this one is this little section. I like the cherish that's in here. I'm thinking I'd like the cherish up near the top. So I'll tear across my cherish and down where cherish finishes. And I'll take out all this bottom section. And then I can go from there to how big and small I want him. So he's gonna go down this way. sit in there. He's going to want to finish about there. So I want a straight edge for the bottom of this one and I'm just going to trim him straight off. Now we're going to just check to see how well he fits in, whether I need to take any more off. No, he's fairly good. If you need to take more off, you just take it from down here to keep this cherished in. Once again, I'll ink around that. Right down, go back to my walnut stain. A little bit of darker. And tag number four is now done as well. To finish this guy off a little bit more, I've got this. For me, a little bit of OCD maybe, I don't know. I don't much like this. So you can do all sorts of things. You could put a um, little bit of lace down here. Um, I've got, I've got somewhere, up oh, here. Um, little strip of ruler, again, out of a paper pad. But what it is, is that deep so that it picks out the deep in the roses. So for me, I think I'm just going to go down here. Again, I like my tearing. Tear each side so it doesn't actually have to go. Oh, it's hard to tear on the edge. There we go. So that it doesn't actually have to go all the way across and try and match him up. I'm just going to ink my white edges on the bit. Now this paper is a glossy paper. So it's not going to take the ink as well. So all I'm doing 
is taking the ink to my edges where I've torn through and I've got my white core colour going inside. He's going to sit here. A little bit of my wet glue again, which I did put the lid on, but didn't check, didn't clear all the glue off the top. So let's hope he's working again. Yep, beautiful. All right, so I just want a little bit of glue in here, a little bit of glue down there. Remembering not to go all the way across, because if you go all the way across, you'll end up with glue sitting in this section, and then your tag that you made is now just a part of the patterned paper, because it's not gonna move. So sitting him around, going down and across, giving him a little bit of a push, making so, sure no glue oozes out. All right, so technically he could be finished like so. The only thing with this, and that's personal preference, is when I turn him over, this one's cream, because I've used a cream cardstock to make my tag in the first place. These ones are now a vivid, bright white. For me, I want them all to be that cream colour. So all I'm going to do is this time, I'm going to take an antique linen. So old paper, antique linen, any of those lighter colours. And I'll take my walnut stain off that one. Change him over to antique linen. And all I'm going to do now is just staying in my semicircles, but I'm going to work my way around the tag. So what it'll do, so my semicircles you'll notice this time are getting larger because I'm trying to go all the way in to the inside edge. So that all it does, and it doesn't look that different from there, but where's another piece of, which one did we use? That one. All right, that's what it was. That's what it is now. So that's the other side of that one. So just that little bit of antique linen with the blending tool has taken that starkness out of it so that it'll then match with the rest of my journaling. This one will be the same. He'll be a stark white on the other side. Once again, I just want to go in take out all that starkness from him so that it softens him up and blends him in a little bit. So, and two. And then my last one, which was my cherish one. A little bit of ink. Doesn't take long. Round. just like so, tuck him in, and there is your little pocket. So really, as you can see, it doesn't take that long at all. Now, as I said before, these ones were a five inch circle. The larger your circle, of course, the larger your tags are all going to have to be. But remember what journal you're working on to the size of your journal to finish. Now, as I said, these were a five inch circle. So they've ended up about two and a half inches wide, six and a half centimetres if you're going in centimetres. This one was a six inch circle and he's ended up about three and a quarter inches wide, eight and a half centimetres wide. The largest one I've got, which was my seven and a half inch circle, which I did on scrap paper to start with, has ended up not quite four inches, about three and three quarter inches or nine and a half centimetres. So remember that when you're doing them to fit them in your journals. The best way to do them is to play with some copy paper, just plain copy paper first and get your sizes correct right on your... Uh, here you go, here's a piece of scrap I had where I was playing around to see how to actually do them. 
but write on it somewhere what size circle it was. So this was my seven and a half inch circle. And then keep those as templates. That way, you, when you're doing your journal, you can pick up the right size and go, yep, I need one that's that size. You've got him written on there to the size of the circle you need and away you go. It takes all that guesswork out for later on. I hope you've all enjoyed that. I hope I've given you some ideas, something to ponder about to go ahead and work on again. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'll see you next time.